Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Velocity Kinetics and the Swayscast. This will be episode 9, if I remember my counting correctly. It is Sunday the 23rd of June, sporting my new watch. You might, in case someone pays attention to my wrist wear, I broke the Casio watch, the black one I had. The watch I've had for the last two, three, Sarah bought me for anniversary and it's engraved. It's a lovely watch and I don't really want to, at times I'm a bit of a watch killer, so don't really want to subject that to more damage. Wind Rivers Meat, really good, good band. I only found, I found them through Facebook. As in it just came up as a random Facebook advert. Um, so, uh, the, what was it? Um, was it oh, it wasn't Play My Game. I do really like that song though. Um, Freeman. Uh, uh, I really like the Freeman, or was it Freeman? I can't remember how you pronounce it. No, it's Freeman, because it's all one word. Gave me some serious ZZ Top vibes, and I've really been feeling the top uh, recently. Um, I do still love McQueen though, but sometimes you can't do, sometimes you need a little bit of like Lagrange for example. Um, so what we're talking about today, uh, this is going to be, a, compared to the others, this might be a shorter Swaced cast, Swaced cast, not Swaced, I can't even get that in my own fucking podcasty thing right. Um, this will be a shorter episode of Swaced cast I think, because I've got stuff to do today. Plus, George is outside at the moment, and I don't like being out too long when I've left him out. Because even though we've had him over a year, had him and Izzy over a year, at times it's obviously still used to having a cat flap and being able to go out when he wants. It still seems to be a novelty to him to be able to ask to go out and to come in. Um, and Izzy's been over the fence for easily an hour today, which is, for her, quite a surprise, because she doesn't normally hop over the fence. Uh, so a couple of things I want to talk about today. First off, is Volvo. News uh, broke late tail end of this week. They're bringing back the V60 and the V90 back to the UK after sort of a... As it seems, it's like there's been a mini revolt against the brand for taking them away. And, well, I mean, maybe mini revolt's a bit of an, a weird way to exaggerate it. Um, it technically, it's an exaggeration. Um, but I suppose it's a weird way to describe it, because most people, in the, and, the, and their sales numbers say, most people buy the SUV. But it's great that the V60 and the V90 are coming back. I would still love a V60, and in fact, on the SUV front, if I could afford a Volvo Estate, I think Sarah would happily not perhaps she would happily drop the SUV requirement. Let those motorbikes buy. Uh, so I think Sarah would happily drop the SUV requirement out of our car search if I could afford a Volvo Estate. But if I could afford a Volvo SUV, I think... Well, if I could afford a Volvo SUV, on the one hand it sounds horrible to make it, to make it sound like she's materialistic and would leave me if I could never afford one. But... The way the comment was going to go is, uh, I know she'd stay with me forever if I could afford one, which, um, that's also not a, fair, not a fair description. But I know she would be extremely happy if, if I could afford one. She loved my dad's Volvos uh, when she's been passenger, a passenger in them. Um, and her dad, years ago, had a, had a Volvo himself, although we're not sure on what make it, what, what the model was, because... She's seen pictures of uh, my dad's V40s, and she's gone, oh no, it was one of them. But it was from, it was her late granddad's Volvo, so probably not one of those, based on what year it was he he, uh, he died. So it could well have been a 940 or a 740. Nonetheless, my, uh, well, however you cut it, my parents have had something like it, and, um, well, Sarah did love that Volvo, but probably because it was her, grand, her late granddad's. Um, and she was always going to be the favourite grandchild in his eyes, anyway, from what I gather. Uh, but it's really great that Volvo bring the estate, the estate back. 
Volvo SUV does, it's still, Volvo do make some amazing SUVs, but it is not, the Volvo Estate and Volvo Saloon is where it's at, and to be honest, if Sarah and I could ever leverage the money, and I, as in whether we could save it, whether we could borrow it and afford to repay it, um, I think we, we would both be quite happy if there was a V60 and an S60 sat on the driveway. But that was really good that they're, they're, they're coming back. I'm going to keep an eye on the prices. I'm going to see what I can do. Because um, as much as I've talked about in other Swayce casts about this Swayce staying, um, if Sarah passes a test shortly, then perhaps yes, it will stay, and I'll get my own. I'll get my own thing. Um, but work on the assumption she doesn't pass her test anytime soon. There's some odds and ends on this car that are starting to rattle that sound expensive and from the Suzuki owner, uh, Suzuki Swayze owners forum. They are expensive to repair or Suzuki refused to acknowledge the damage. Damage? Well, I suppose it's damage because it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not as was. Um, but, but yeah. Patrick Swayze's time is time is marked. He might go in October, but depends on what offers are around on the pre-regs and the end of the 24 plate uh, cycle. Um, as for what it'll be, I don't know. Like I said, love it to be a Volvo, love it to be that A4 I saw. The other thing though, recently, I sent an email to Volvo, to their, is it PR? Might have been PR. I can't remember what exact, exact part, media relations, that was it. Sent an email to their media relations um, inbox. Uh, it turned out to be for Volvo Cars Europe, not UK, but still. Uh, and I basically asked, um, I, my email was basically quite short. Uh, I, I said, look, I, I run a small blog uh, slash vlog, and I'd like to move more into reviewing cars. Could I borrow a car for a, for? A, could I have a press car for a very short period of time? Um, and that would be fantastic if you could facilitate. And I did add in the comment, and some people might say, "Well, that's why you shot yourself in the foot." I did say, "If you can't do this, never mind. Uh, I do. I do. It's not a problem. I, I may have overreached with what my numbers are." Now, I was always going to treat it as a win if Volvo even acknowledged my email because you could easily, they could easily and fairly have viewed that email as, oh, it's just a bloody chance of wanting to get a free car for a short period. But no, the Volvo Europe asked a couple of questions. They then forwarded it on to Volvo UK. So already partially up on a win. Come on. So we're already partially up on the wind there. And then, um, nail that cable, there we go. So there's a drain cover, if you, if you nail the drain cover, it's solid, but you nail it, then you can carry the most speed through that corner. Um, the, the, it went on to Volvo UK. They, are, they asked a couple back, they had a couple back and forth. They asked me some questions about Velocity Kinetics. Uh, I sent them what my channel demographics were. Um, and I've got to be honest, I've never really looked at the channel's demographics before. The who's viewing, where's viewing, who, what, where, when, who, up the creek with no canoe. And it took a bit of time to get a response. A bit of time as in, like well, you split hairs over a couple of weeks, really. Ultimately, Volvo have said no. Uh, to, to the press car inquiry. Now, I might have shot high going Volvo. I might have had a better chance if I went and asked Suzuki. And I, I might still ask Suzuki for, for a car for a little bit, because I've done a lot of things, and I think, look, I've nailed every... I've talked about the Solerio, 
I reviewed Swift, uh, Swift I've reviewed the Bellano multiple times, I reviewed the Swace multiple times, I've reviewed the uh, Vitara, granted a very short review of the Vitara, and just a slightly underwhelming because of how short a time I had it for and I didn't really get my arse and gear for filming, but it, 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 it was what it was. And you know what? I'm going to chalk that up as a win because they could have, like I said, Volvo could have so easily said, sling your hook. They've said that I basically just haven't got a big enough following, which is a shame. <clears throat> but I understand they've got to look at what, what will get them the biggest. They've got to look at their numbers too. They've got to look at, they've got to look at what's going to drive sales, who's going to do what, and it I sort of, I don't really want to, I don't want it to be an influencer sort of thing at all. I just want to drive a brand that I like. I just want to review a Volvo, I just want to re so, in, so, so talk, so I'm trying to move that point on from it, from there. Up to, oh, I just want to review a Volvo or anything. I just want to start reviewing cars more. And I've, I've sort of got an ongoing review with this space because obviously I deliver it, deliver little updates and things through this. There's the all the different parts of owning space. I should really commit time and word document to actually writing down the thoughts, um, but I haven't as of yet. Some of these trip verges have grown over a bit since I used to come this way all the time for going to Hadley. Dips opened up a lot. Oh, so is that one. Oh, just avoided it. That's just the over the line blip telling me I've gone over a line. Let it roll, let it roll. Put it into B. Do a bit engine brake. Bit more hard on the brakes. Go wide because we know there might be some early morning cyclists. All clear ahead. Give a quick look behind us before we dip the throttle, bury the throttle, put the speed limiter on at 60 so we are not going to have another problem, another corner, into brake, out of brake, turn it in, mind the middle of the road, up we go, be ready to brake, engine brake, this bit's quite tight, and then we're going to come to a 90 degree right, so lift off, hit the brakes, bit of engine brake, you can't really do this one any faster than 30. Not without the tyres stud starting to say they've had enough. Tiny point and squirt, another 90 degree left. Bit more brake, bit more brake. Round we go. And nail it, nail it, and lift because there's a 30, to 30 sign coming up in just a second. Might as well let the car roll and do its thing. You can tell I drive and drive these roads tons. And that would all that would have been, you would have shifted between in the Belano between second and fourth. That you wouldn't have gone into fifth. It would have been that first 90 you left, that would have been all the way into third. Second, if you wanted a bit more rev on the way out, but you'd have to have shifted very quickly afterwards. Second, third, fourth, then into third, down into second, up into third, maybe snatch fourth to drop it back into third. Maybe a tiny bit of blip on the way up. And then that tiny stretch between the two, 90 right, 90 left, you'd have just left that in second. Um, but anyway, away from me uh, trying to be uh, demonstrate my best uh, Michael Schumacher or Lewis Hamilton or whoever you want to say I'm attempting to emulate forgot about this uh, stuff with the traffic it's a, it's a lovely road and lovely lined we nearly, we nearly moved here when we moved down but I'm not sure if I'd have Mind you, I'd have been stuck going to... Well, mind you, I'd have taken about 10 miles off my commute from Risby. Gorgeous place. If you're ever in Suffolk, I've never actually been to anywhere within Lavenham. I've always driven through it, but I'd always, I'd recommend... I believe there's a couple of Nash... Uh, if they're not in Lavenham, they're extremely close to Lavenham. A couple of English heritage sites, a couple of national uh, trust sites, a couple of lovely tea rooms, because one of them nearly did the catering for our wedding. Uh, there's a big classic car scene around here as well. We've got an MGB. Uh, just there, not sure how well in shot that would have been or not. I'm going to go a tiny, do a tiny bit this way, I think. Let's 
because I do also want to do a little bit more going absolutely nuts just to get a little bit out of the system to her to be honest but as a as where, where was I but as a whole I'd like to move into reviewing cars more so if you've got a car that you wouldn't mind lending me and I don't care to up to a point what it is as in I just want it to be safe and road legal that's basically it as long as it's safe as long as it's road legal as long as you don't mind me sticking um, I say stick it's a suction cup mount but as long as you don't mind me pressing that onto your uh, paintwork onto your um, onto your onto your glass and things then yeah let's do it you'll get credit in the video and I suppose we can always work out some sort of monetary reward if the video gets enough to start making money, but we're not at the point where we're making money off uh, off them. What else? Have, other cars have I reviewed? Be careful there, because there's a curb that sticks out. You, if you're not careful, you accidentally clip it, and the number of times I caused a squeak in the Belena by catching it on the way in. Oh, there it is. And that actually looked like a little small, like it's come away. Maybe it was always coming away when I used to come down here in the Belena. Formula One. Um, as you can tell, I've got my Alpine top on, um, full gas. Uh, I, I, I support Pierre Gasly. I think, I think the way Red Bull did him over was fucking awful back in the day. And the fact, and the fact he won the race in the Alpha Tauri. Granted, there were a lot of things, a lot of weird circumstances working in his favour. But that, that Alpha Tauri was in that position to take advantage of it. No ifs, no buts, no coconuts. He he done he done the work to put it into that position. So you know what uh, what else what else could he have done? The Ocon situation. I'm surprised Ocon still has a seat at times. He can be a really good driver, and he has his moments because he wouldn't have won the race with Alpine. Um, Granted, Alonso tried to claim, tried, has, whatever way you want to describe it, though, that he has some credit for the win by keeping Hamilton behind him for as long as he did. Uh, is that a cyclist? Yes, it is. Right. Well, that's put paid to my fun. But this is one of the few stretches you can overtake in just a second. somewhere I'd like to try. Lovely. That didn't used to be there. Oxford. Oxford Hall? Is that a thing? Maybe. Um, but, you know, I'm surprised Ocon still has a seat at times. The number of times he's he's been involved with clashes with teammates. At times he hasn't shown the flashes of brilliance that he was supposed to, to be. Um, he keeps talking himself up as if he's going to get that second Mercedes seat instead of Kimi Antonelli. Um... Mercedes are stupid, in my opinion, to put Antonelli in. Look at how unpopular, unpopular. If you look way back when, and look at how unpopular a move it was to put Verstappen in the uh, Toro Rosso at, at his age, and then put him into the um, into the Red Bull. It was not a popular decision, not a popular move, and it could backfire if. Antonelli isn't delivering the results, but he's not delivering in F2 at the moment, and, G and sorry, it's F3. Whatever, the, whatever formula he's currently in, he's not delivering. I think it's GP2, F2, because the Premier, Premier team are not having a good time because Behrman's in the same team. Oh, yes, you've got the right idea, mate. Lotus Elise, roof down, going for it, abso fucking lootly. Yeah. 
Oh, there we are. Coming up to 40, I think, so let's just get that, use that car to accelerate it up the hill and let's just lift and just let it coast. Whew. And breathe. What is it? Is it 30? Or is it 43? That's 30. And I've got a full battery. Um, I'm to, I'm, there's a lot of rumours going on that Sainz has been signed at Williams, and I'm conflicted. Because I thought Williams would have signed Bottas instead of Sainz. Um, now, obviously, Bottas and Vals have got that whole Valtteri, it's James um, meme, vibe, whatever you want to call it. They've got that whole situation going on. Um, so I can understand perhaps from Valtteri's perspective that he has why he hasn't wanted to, to go, assuming this is assuming that the rumour isn't true that that um that science has been signed. However, you cannot you cannot ignore the balls on Williams to make a move to sign science. And it's also a case that well Albon was surely destined for bigger things than Williams. So what does what what is going on there? Have, have they got a newy? Have they got a newy signed? Then we're going to see the, the the rise of Williams again. Cause I'm down for that. <laughs> you know it. I'm I'm fucking down for that. Or uh is it just a case of look we've got this investment we've got this money we're sure we can invest in the composites we sh we're sure we can do this and we're be we're be we have our belief and if you look at where we were and where we are and so on that's also it's also a case of williams perhaps have already started their dev their dev work for um what's the time oh shit i'm gonna have to shorten the 10 around um perhaps williams already started their dev work for 2026, before the before the limits were put on, and they've they've already seen very positive numbers. Who knows what to, what what they've seen or not seen? But I've got to respect Williams for trying to get too experienced in there. Logan Sargent, I've not even seen flashes, I've not seen flashes of brilliance, I've not seen flashes of this is why we signed him, because you would see, you saw that, look, I mean we're diving back years now, but, so actually, we're, well, yeah, we're still diving back years, but look at when Valtteri put the FW35 on, if it wasn't on pole, it was on the front row. We saw flashes of what Valtteri could do back then, and then look at what he then did when we when we got the FW36 and 37. I can't remember if he was at the team for 38. But if you look at all those podiums and high positions he scored, or even Maldonado 2012, we saw what he was kind of capable of with with a good car. Although to be honest, as much as I do love Bruno Senna and I, and I have to give Maldonado some respect. Um, stuff to do back home before the before the Grand Prix which I plan to watch today but yeah science Williams if it's if it's happening oh that was a big break my, my eco score is gonna be so in the toilet when I get home um, the, the it's it's an amazing move if that's if they've pulled it off if they've pulled it off without having to resort to their checkbook then, wow, what an unbelievable coup. And to pull it right out from under the feet of Audi, unless, 
I did have a thought thought the other day when I was messaging uh, my friend uh, James back and forth. So if you're watching, Mr. Massingham, hello. You've been called out on Velocity Kinetics or shouted out. Um, I did wonder when we were messaging back and forth, like, hang on, if science is going there, perhaps this might be a deal for Williams to have. Maybe there's been a backdoor deal done already for cheap engine parts. Maybe Williams are about to ditch Mercedes and go all in on Audi power. Which wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be a surprise. Uh, but whether, whether Audi want customer teams is another thing altogether. But it's more data. And this is where Renault in the Alpine have, have had problems. Where... Um, where the, the Renault is only in the Alpine car. No other team runs that runs the unit. If you look back when Renault, this is when Renault was still Renault, um, before they rebranded to Alpine. And when McLaren were running Renault engines, well, Renault were doing a bit better because they had more data coming in. Didn't, didn't escape some of the underlying weaknesses of the power unit and the, and the associated tech, but, Renault were on the up and then they weren't speaking of Renault and Alpine there's talk that Alpine are going to ditch Renault power which is such a shame because Renault have got such a strong history in uh, Formula 1 some of, they've got some of the some of the most technologically advanced vehicles um, I'm going to have to go because you've not got the space to swing out. Um, they've got some of, the, uh, some of the most technologically advanced, bringing in turbocharging. They've got some of the most iconic, such as the that it, even now it looks gorgeous. That uh, granted, it was more probably more from the Telefonica uh, sponsorship that they had, but the blue and yellow of the of the Renaults that Al Alonso drove to. To world championship glory um the black and yellow of, of the renault's like well yesteryear and as well of when they came back you've had lots of big names drive for them alonso being one of them what will alpine do for power then because i'm just trying to think who supplies who so mercedes 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 power themselves, they power um, Aston Martin, and they power Williams. They have supplied four before, because they have supplied that team in the past in its Lotus guys. Um, there is uh, Ferrari supplying Ferrari Sauber currently, and um, Haas. Got Alpine sponsoring uh, such as uh, Renault powering Alpine, and then you've got Honda supplying Red Bull and RBR. Uh, RB, sorry, V Carb, whatever you want to call the damn team now. Um, take up the mantle. Well, I say Mercedes has supplied that team in the past, Alpine Mercedes. I mean, Ferrari about to have a supply going spare when Audi come in. Um, and Honda could even the playing field just make it three apiece, so it's uh, Alpine Honda. But given that Aston's going to get Honda, there's another, there's another supply going out. There's another supply going there. So, I don't know. I'm not to be honest, I don't have a fucking clue what Alpine are playing at, to uh, to be honest. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, cows. I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea what they're thinking of. I just know that they keep, if they keep doing, if they keep doing this whole reset, 100 race, re-plan, L-plan, D-plan, V-plan, M-plan, LMNOP, QRS, TUV, WX, Y, and Z plan. <clears throat> it's going to be hard to take them seriously. They're not going to be able to attract 
the talent, and I don't just mean the talent that goes behind the wheel, because heck, I'd bloody drive for them if I could lose enough weight, or I'd bring my own downforce so they don't they could always run Monza spec. Actually, that might be an interesting one. You can always run Monza spec to hire me and my weight, and I will... Well, we'll see. Alpine, if you're watching, let's make this happen. Not averse to giving it the beans. The other thing... Oh, yeah, I know. Beep, 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 beep. The... Yeah, it's just, it's just a lane departure. There's a couple of places where it's not... Those trucks have got to get to, to get have got to get to community shops and things, but sometimes they are not the best vehicle. I don't know why they can't offload into a transit somewhere, but it is 2024, and you know, at times we've got we've got to have better roads than what we've currently got, man. <sighs> Ow. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, Alpine won't be able to track it. I won't be able to track it to attract the talent because people won't take them seriously. As it is, at times I do struggle to take them seriously. But there we are. I don't know what's going to happen next. The Red Bull is quite... Red Bull's problems at the moment is very interesting. You always associate that car as being on rails, especially the last couple of years. But then again, Red Bull does have a track record of... Um... Red Bull does have a track record of having cars that are insanely dominant and then suddenly something wrong, something ever so slightly goes wrong with them, and they can't ever seem to recapture the magic, or recapture the dominance, maybe. That said, as I, I, I'm with a myth, I do often partake in the whole, oh, it's bloody Red Bull, anyone could drive it. But recently, I, I, I've been forced to not, and um, that's not a, whether, that's not going to be a statement that's followed by rightly or wrongly, it, there's, I have been rightly forced because it is um, it is proof that Max Verstappen is the is bring it, bringing the extra. Perez is not a slow driver. He is not a bad driver because he wouldn't have been on Ferrari's radar for years. He was a Ferrari Academy driver. Let us not forget. He was Ferrari Academy back in the day. He put the he nearly won a race in the bloody Sauber all those years ago. And yet he can't make that car work sometimes. Granted, I do believe that Red Bull is set up, built, all development, all direction goes the way Verstappen wants it to. I do subscribe to that, rightly or wrongly. But then again, if you've got a team with a strong number one, you are always going to bias your car to the number one. You couldn't you couldn't tell me that you're gonna drop you could drop Verstappen into the Williams. And yes, he'll drive the nuts off that thing. But that Williams will be built more towards Albon's liking. It just will be. And likewise, the Mercedes, it'll be built more towards Lewis Hamilton's liking, because even though he is leaving, he is the seven time. The Ferrari is built more towards Leclerc's liking. We'll see. It's a, an interesting one in my, in my humble, in my humble opinion. It's interest. It's going to be interesting. I've normally recently only been able to watch. I haven't had the time to be able to watch full races. 
And I've got to admit, yeah, at times, I do love F1, but sometimes it is boring to watch. Sometimes. But I would imagine if you were paying for things like Sky F1 and you could follow it on your iPad or what have you and, and get the live telemetry and make that sort of thing a bit more bit more interesting for yourself or where you could choose your own onboards and things I, I have no doubt that facility would be brilliant to be honest I'm surprised F1 hasn't teamed up with YouTube to deliver a free stream whether that's like, whether they then take it in turns for who does the commentary so for the English audiences whether that passes between Channel 4 Sky um, Sky coverage uh, the F1 coverage with um, Will Buxton, is that his name? I can't stand him some days. Or the Five Live comp... I actually, I actually quite like the listen to the, F, the, the Five Live one, especially when Mark Priestley's doing because I, I do like... I do love watching those F1 Elvis videos, especially the old ones when he would explain the tech. But there we are. I... Hey... Ooh. This hill's better going up it than it is down it. For some reason, I cannot really work it out. It's nothing to do with the verges but the lane is slightly wider on this side of the road than it is on that side. Couldn't tell you why, it just is. And it's nothing to do with having a big car or not. Um, but it's a lovely sunny day. I thought I'd get one of these done. I mean, it always makes me feel better, whether regardless of whether these gets watched or not. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, thank you for your time. Hello Suzuki, I'm closing the door on quite quickly. I haven't I haven't had my foot on the throttle for the past easily 20 seconds. Oh yes, it's a 65 plate S cross. I'm doing 40 miles an hour now and I'm still closing the gap. Now I'll put my foot finally back on the gas. What the hell is he doing? I don't know. But there's one of these hills when I in my Belano I worked out that I I think it's about here if I've nailed it to 60 somewhere. Back there, I think it's lifting off about here with the gradient of the hill. I could get, I can be all the way down at the right speed limit. Assuming no one was behind me and I couldn't, um, and lifting off was a, was a dangerous move, that I could do that and just lifting coast all the way back up. Going on holiday next week, um, so there won't be any Swayze cast recorded for a little while. Um, but I'll probably schedule, I'll probably upload one and schedule it to go live. Uh, these are all. Uh, before, I was going to, uh, I'll do a call to action now. Um, if you've made it this far through, thank you for your support. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. As I notice a lot of people who watch your videos are not subscribed, so give us a little subscribe. I'd like to try and get to 100 in just 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 whenever we can. 100 seems like a good start. Share the video around your family and friends. Um, if you like what we do, um, please feel free to donate on a one-off basis via PayPal to paypal.me forward slash velocity kinetics. Um, that basically just acts like a tip goes towards buying some new equipment every once in a while and if we get enough it'll buy it'll buy us a proper website um, or there's another thing I use called buy me a coffee um, and I haven't really explained what what the extent what why it's got the uh, what have I explained I can't remember why it's got the URL it's got no not the buy me a coffee because that's that's down to whoever owns buy me a coffee so the page is www.buymeacoffee.com no, buy it buy me a coffee.com hello www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash customer service expert now customer service expert is a blog that I started and uh, well I don't really do the main writing for it anymore a friend of mine picks it up a bit more so almost like what Russ and I did with Velocity Kinetics um, but I think even my friends ran out of steam because it just sometimes everything's so negative not as in we're being negative there's just not a positive topic to write about we were meant to be the anti-Martin Lewis, 
Uh, so we weren't meant to be claiming, oh, his financial advice is wrong, which treat his advice with a pinch of salt, because he doesn't have, to the best of my knowledge, he doesn't have a financial advice qualification. He's just professional being tight. But, it, what was missing from a lot of his things is the bit to tell people to be nice. It took him years when... I, I, I worked for PPI at Santander for, for, for a few months, and that was back when PPI claiming was at its peak. And Suzuki seems to be a member of the 44s. They were holding me up on the on the other stretch, and now they're just pulling away from me in the 30. Jesus Christ. Anywho. The... During that time, he never told people to be nice to the people on the other end of the phone. It took until nearly the end of PPI for him to finally start saying, you know, the people on the phone or whoever you're speaking to, they're just processing the complaints, there's no need to be rude and things like that. But that was years for him to do that. I could be on the phone to Bearings Law every other day, um, not as in I'm suing people left, right and centre, as in Bearings Law are doing a claim for PCP. Uh, payments, uh, PCP, personal contract purchase, uh, for a number of years, a lot of places didn't disclose any brokerage slash commission fees um, that they were hidden, and they were hidden within the costs of the agreement. Now, if mine is correct, oh wow, an A cross, a Suzuki A cross, actual one out in the wild. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, back to the more serious side of things, uh, the PCP claims. Um, it was to basically get money back. Uh, if my claims are correct and they go for the amount, not factoring in the additional interest for how long the complaint's been going on for, so I started the, the process back when I lived in South Shields, not long after I bought my second, my second Baleno. Back then, the original claim value was about £5,000. That's not factoring in what Bearings Law will take. For, for their portion of the pie. Um, I believe their commission rate is like 35%, so I'd be out quite a lot of money, but that, but it's money I haven't got, so up to a point, up to a point, I don't mind. But I could be on the phone to, to Bearings Law every other day, like some people were with PPI, and be like, where is it, where's my money, where's this, where's that? A ruling hasn't been made, the decisions are still happening, and I say, but how bloody long it's been going on for? It's just going to take for bloody ever. It's going to take a Kenny Wire Lake. But, ugh, there we are. Anyway, people, I'm going to finish driving, uh, driving home. I would recommend on a nice sunny day like today, which is 26th of June, um, so I've got a bit of a delay on these because I'm not sure what other content I want to film, and I've been a bit uninspired on the other stuff that I've wanted to wanted to do. Just in the ideas aren't there just yet. But if whenever you, this video goes up, if the weather's like this, as it is now, beautifully sunny, blue skies. Barely a cloud in the sky at the moment. Low chance of rain. Oh, pull over a tiny bit for that motorbike. He shouldn't really be doing that, but there we are. Just get in your car, go for a drive. I fucking love my cars, I fucking love petrol. I, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a big petrol head to get any enjoyment out of out, out of it. You don't have to know cars. You don't have to love them through and through. You just have to love yours. You just have to love your car, or, or very least, you got to like your own car. It's not just a yes. They are tools. Yes, they're to be used. Yes, they're expensive. Yes, everyone else do, does sometimes drive theirs like a complete nut tool.
but if you can find a, a lovely stretch of road and you're feeling a bit confident, you've had your Red Bull, you've had your coffee, I would say you don't feel like a pussy, but actually vaginas are far better than cotton balls because you just need to flick them wrong or sit them wrong in there and you're writhing around on the floor in pain. If you're feeling, if you feel like you've got your, you've, you've got your, <laughs> about you, feeling a bit, yeah, grab your keys, find a stretch of road, remember the rules of the road though, because I, everything I've done today, I haven't broken the speed limit, or if you've got two wheels, Just, just go, you know. The words of Boston have my peace of mind. And with that, drive safe, look after yourselves. I'll see you later.